All right, so today we have our latest update with the Dylan Rounds case. We're going to be breaking down what happened in court with James Brenner. The audio in this hearing is really low, and it's really hard to hear what they're saying. So I did my best to turn it up all the way, and I put closed captions of what I could tell that they're saying and uh, put that in there for you guys so you can um, follow along. That was the kind of the point of this video was just to make it easier for everybody to understand what's going on in this uh, hearing. Yeah, so coming up, we're going to be finding out that they don't want to charge Brenner with a capital murder. So this isn't going to be considered a capital aggravated murder. It's just going to be aggravated murder. Um, they're also going to be trying to get Brenner two attorneys, and they only do that in possible death penalty cases. So is the death penalty off the table completely? We don't know. They don't really explain it. Yeah, if you like this style video, please like, share, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Turn on notifications and make sure they're enabled on your phone so you get them. Yeah, here we go. All right, Mr. Studebaker, there are three matters we're scheduled for decisions to come right here. So, Your Honor, we're on a uh, case ending in uh, 128 and 171. We'd ask the court to have those trail case ending in 110. In case ending 110, as the court's aware, um, last time we were in court, uh, the court had to write, I guess, provisionally or whatever, I had to plan to make part of the contract we have with me with, with Boston of the County. And as such, after research, I think public communication from the AOC um, determined that uh, because Boston of the County pays into the industry defense fund, uh, that aggravated murder would be um, presented to that. And then, um, about the same time frame, uh, I'm really qualified and all the other really qualified lawyers. All right, so what Mr. Studebaker is talking about right now, Mr. Studebaker is James's defense attorney, is the indigent defense fund um, is what he is trying to, what James is trying to uh, apply for. Um, what that is, is basically it's like a, a claim for relief for, you know, the poor uh, people who can't afford uh, representation. Um, it's basically a statement showing that the party would be entitled to relief and they would demand for a judgment for this, uh, you know, whatever relief they need. So if whatever, um, you know, it's, if it's a court-appointed attorney or whatever that be, that's what the Rule 8 is. You're going to hear this coming up a few times in the trial, uh, Rule 8 lawyers. I guess there's only some defense lawyers that are allowed to be Rule 8 because it involves the death penalty. Received an email asking for anybody who would have the ability to represent Mr. Brenner. I just wanted yes. So my name and probably others have submitted to this court. This last week, this court issued an order. I think it was Thursday, um, appointing in the Rule Eight uh, process. We started to work on that. We have to enter a new contract with the Indigent Defense Fund, um, not with Box Soda County, and then they would then uh, have a fund request separate contracts, things to that effect, which the court's aware of. Um, I then reached out to attorney Jonathan Nish. Uh, John is also a really qualified lawyer uh, and asked, you know, for him because I was on vacation to start looking into this, you know, for him because I was on vacation to start looking into this. He reached out to the Indigent, Indigent Defense Fund um, and then uh, started that process for me. And then said we would need um, this court to appoint co counsel. When I looked at um, the emails he was sending me while I was gone, as well as um, his communication with the IDF, uh, it would appear that under the contract they require two Rule 8 lawyers to be appointed on any aggravated murder. Uh, that's not within the purview of the boss of the county. Uh, this is something that's part of the the, the way I refer to as the fund. We had filed a motion, um, I believe Sunday, no, I'm sorry, Saturday, I was actually at the airport, and, and filed a motion, asked this court to appoint Jonathan Nish as co-counsel pursuant to the IDF requirements. Uh, the state has not had the opportunity to respond to that. I acknowledge that. We just filed that uh, as soon as I got back to shore. And so our request would be that I guess if the state wants to file a response, then we need the appropriate time to respond on things to that effect. 
If they uh, do not wish to file a response, we ask the court to issue a main entry um, similar to what the court did with the court appointed on me. And so we can bring Mr. Uh, Nish on and we can go from there and that's court date. So I think that's the first title we need to jump through. Hurdle, not huddle. Hurdle? I heard court date. So I think that's the first title we need to jump through. Hurdle, not huddle. Hurdle? I heard Anything from the state? I saw the filings. Um, I don't know how the IDF works as far as what they're appointing a second counsel or not. I know they do they definitely capital cases. This is not a capital case. Second counsel or not. I know they do they definitely capital cases. This is not a capital case. So the prosecution right here is saying that this isn't a capital murder case, so the death penalty isn't on the table. It's it's really kind of confusing that they're still going to be going through this to get him two lawyers. Um, even though the prosecutor is saying that death penalty is not on the table, this isn't a capital murder case. But why is the prosecution taking capital um, punishment off the table? You know, I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to, you know, wait and find out. Hopefully in the hearings coming up, we'll be able to find out more information. Is it because they don't have the body and they need more evidence? Uh, we'll see. Um, but the IDF covers two attorneys. I mean, that's none of my business. So I think that's the question I have is whether on a non-capital aggregate murder case, whether it covers two attorneys or one. So in that information I received from Mr. Nish, who's um, very qualified, He's with this court, or was with this court already on a, a ruling case. Well, on that one, it was capital. We, we acknowledge that. But the contract um, says the way IDF interprets that is it, and I acknowledge that the state in Utah in this case is not seeking death, but the, the, the contract and applying the statute says that if death may be a possibility, and it's not in this one, but if it may be, um, and it's not about the general code section. Then they, then they appoint you. Um, and usually it's lead counsel, which would be myself, who reaches out and then finds competent, qualified co counsel um, on that. We have very qualified public defenders, so I'm not saying that they're not, but they are not really qualified. I'm the only one who is really qualified. And so um, I think what I would ask for is this should be an entry appointing Jonathan Nish and then the IDF as co counsel. And if IDF has a concern about that, um, then we can come back before this court and then raise that issue. Otherwise, if we give the state a chance to respond, and, and which we're entitled to, and then we reply, and we have to do notice to submit, and all that type of process. But I think maybe that will help alleviate um, lots of the county's concern. We could issue an order or an entry order saying, let's appoint Jonathan Nish. All right, so this is Jonathan Nish. This is who Studebaker wants for his co counsel. And this IDF objects. And then Mr. Bish would be, he would have to enter a contract with IDF, like I have to enter a contract with IDF. That would be the, the position I would take. Okay. If the court agrees that, what's that? That would be set the next court date. I'm just, not, I'm just not sure that your interpretation is correct when you say may. Clearly, as it's charged, it may, but with the state's declaration, right. that may eliminate that. Um, it may. I, I agree. And so, therefore, I'm not sure if that would apply. So, um, but I have yeah, the way the contracts, what I'm being told is that the way the contracts are drafted by IDF, any really case, because lots of the counties pays into that fund, and not all the counties do, it's usually the, the smaller, more rural counties, um, then IDF appoints two really qualified lawyers. And, and that's something that's outside the purview of anything here. That's why I think they need to protect. Everybody's concerned if we could have the probation on a order saying that Mr. Uh, Johnson Nish is appointed as co counsel and is ordered to, you know, do the same thing the court did with, with my appointment um, and then go forward there. And then if IDF has a complaint or concern, right, we come out before this court and say, hey, Your Honor, it would appear that we were all wrong. We ask for the vacate the order appointing Mr. Nish and we go from there. Um, let, let me just take, I'll, I'll take a look into it and then I'll issue an appropriate order. Okay. Um, whether or not I believe that that is the correct interpretation. And then once I've issued that order, if there's some disagreement from either side, you can uh, address it. That okay. Then we'll move here. So what I'd ask for to do is set this for. So what the judge is saying right here is that he's going to go over what Brenner's defense is trying to say that he gets two defenders. 
So this could be going back and forth between the judge and the IDF. Um, so this could really kind of prolong things. Um, you know, hopefully this doesn't go into the speedy trial um, for Utah because that could make it so he completely walks from this. We hope that this gives us enough time to find Dylan and um, make a more solid case against Sprinter. Decision of prelim, I hate to do this, uh, but I have further decision of prelim July 3rd. The reason I hate to do it is I'm just recovered from surgery that week, but we need to get this case uh, proceeding forward. So unfortunately, we have to do at least six weeks. Here, okay. here's, here's the problem that, that is, uh, I guess, presented in this case. Sure. Uh, and oh, I think you're aware of that, Mr. Studebaker, uh, Mr. Bremer is in federal custody. Yeah, I forgot about that. Each time this court acts, it has to get permission from the federal government to bring Mr. Uh, right. I, I, yeah, I was going to say Mr. Bremer in. And from what I understand from the state, the process is a minimum of six weeks. Yeah, what I asked for is that I the after it correct? Yeah, yeah I, that's correct. Some of the counties have to be just those federal <laughs> That's something we make. So uh, it sounds like all chaos is breaking loose. There's like a small dog barking. It sounds like a, uh, Brenner's defense keeps on interrupting the judge. Um, it's just kind of, it's, it's a really odd, really odd hearing. Uh, that is correct. I'd ask for to set this for decision of prelim July 31st, 9th, 1.30. All right, so now we're finding out that Brenner's next court appearance is going to be July 31st at 1.30 p.m. Uh, reason being, they have to push it out six to eight weeks because him being in federal custody, they have to get the paperwork ready, and it takes like six to eight weeks to get him transferred from the jail to the court. So that's why this is taking so long. Yeah, that works out. That's <laughs> All right, July 31st at 1.30, where the state has no opposition to the appointment of Mr. Nish. If that is uh, feasible and can be done, Mr. Studebaker, after I've had a chance to review it, um, I will issue the order. If not, I will issue the order. Um, okay, and then if there's an objection, we can ask for an objection. I expect you to put it in on And if, if, if not, then I will issue an order that says that that request is denied. At that point, you can give yourself a court. Okay, we'll do that. But I'm happy because Mr. Brenner is a federal inmate. We uh, will be requesting his presence to wait. We don't want to wait until July 31st to you know, get co counsel appointed. Oh, if, if, meaning if, if I deny the request and you object and you want to have a hearing on the issue, right. you, you want to, to wait his appearance. We wait his appearance here. Yeah, just because we don't want to drag it out. Okay, does the state have any opposition? No, that's right. And are you all right with that as well, Mr. Brenner? Say yes. yes. Thank you. All, All right. right. That'll be everything then, unless you have something further. No, that's all we have. Our thank you. All right. So that's it. Um, we can see his lawyer putting his hand up on his shoulder a few times during the hearing, and um, trying to comfort him. It looks like. So maybe this is try to trying to humanize him, trying to make it look like you know. Uh, you know, he's more of a, you know, he's just an old guy. He's his, he's his buddy putting his hand on his shoulder, you know. <laughs> yeah, so if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. And it really helps us with the algorithm and sharing it. It's all, you know, thank you guys so much. Oh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed. And, yeah, we'll see you next time. One, two, three, go. Really old. Crazy how the fracturing goes with the rock. You know how it goes from such a small opening. Awesome. You guys can see all the...